Hello and welcome to a new video about my load cell, of my scale. Today I want to make it a little bit prettier so that I can really use it. You know, right now it's battery and grams and so on. It's nice. It's nice, but uh, this time I want to really, really make it a little bit more convenient to use. Alright? So first, I want that this battery stuff and so on, uh, that this the battery and the weight should be in the same line, okay? This should be in the same line. So, actually, what I'm going to do is... Uh, yeah. What... I want this the, the load to be on the right-hand side, so at 6, 6. And then I will make lcd.print. Uh, then we have one sign, kilo, 110, then we have a comma, gram. So this is 15. Here, yeah, this is 15. This is 14, 13, 12, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Seven. I think this should do the trick. And now I want that this is exactly filled in here. So I'll have a position and this should be 10. Okay? At position 10, we are writing because this, this should be here somewhere. Yeah? Here. And uh, then I will make a float, absolute load, if load is smaller than zero, then the apps load is minus load, and I have the, the position is minus minus, because I have a sign, this minus is written on the left, so I, I have to write a position early, I have to start a position early, this is why I cannot use it with, with apps function, okay, else, uh, Apps load equals load. All right, that's it. Ah, uh, and then we have while apps load is bigger or equal ten. I have to move left. Pose minus minus and apps load divided by ten. This is good. Every time I'm bigger than 10, so if I'm 1000, I start three digits. This I can forget. This I can forget. But the only thing is LCD dot set cursor. And now we set it to position and one. And then we print the load. Mm -hmm. Let's try this. Let's try if this is looking good. And scale. Alright, looking good. You see, this is exactly what I tried to reach. Now with right bound, if I move it up, minus looks also okay. This in it is I don't like, but we will move the battery down and this should, should work better. This should work better. Okay. So with the load output, I'm already satisfied. I will remove this that we're not printing out too much on the serial monitor. We don't need print out on the serial monitor. Okay. So, uh, battery. Where's the battery output? Here. Here's the battery output. I want that this thing is blinking. Okay. I, so I will, I will add here a static pool show part. And this should at the beginning should be true. So we want to show the battery. We want to show the battery. Okay. I want to show the battery. Uh, where I want to show it. This time I want to show it at 
the left and here we will lcd dot print and we will print it like this b one two three percent this is not a percent sign this is a percent sign so very short very very accurate okay uh if battery is smaller than 20 percent i want that this thing is blinking yeah, then I have show pad equals not show pad. And I will set update, update battery dot set timer. I don't know, 500 milliseconds that we're blinking in seconds. Okay. Else, what is else? Uh, show pad must be true. So I want to show. The status uh, and update battery set timeout and let's say every five seconds it's sufficient to put out a new a new battery value all right and if mm, if show but show the battery i will print it out but where i will i will do it exactly the same way this time I'll start at position 4. This is here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So at the last one, yeah, position 4. Yeah. Then I have uh, this in how was it called there? Absolute load absolute or what apps load. I will call it apps apps bet uh, equals battery. There is no that this is not below zero, yeah. And while apps bed is bigger than nine, because we have integer now bigger than nine, position minus minus apps bed divided by ten. LCD set cursor uh, at position first line or second line actually and print bad this we don't know uh, we don't need no this we also no longer need so we sh should see now the battery let's have a look upload this let's have a look now the battery should be shifted down here and actually if it's zero percent it should already blink i hope uh-huh i have a coding error of course, this must be inside here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. One digit to the right. Blinking. And if I turn it on here, 100%. All right. So I assume everything in between will work as well. Hind scale. Yeah. So this now looks good. Yeah. And now with the tar, I also want to have the printout of of the current tar uh, value. Now that we know how much load we have already put on there, right? That we know this. Ah. Uh, I want to print this in the first line, so I have to wipe the first line from time to time. And what I also don't like is this here. I will move this and will define here a constant. Define calibration factor. And this should be this. Yeah? Then I will use here calibration factor. All right. Uh, I will make a first, a new timeout wipe first line and let's say this is three seconds i will make a function wipe first line and this we will say lcd dot set cursor zero zero and we make lcd dot print and one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen fifteen sixteen now we should have cleared the first line Okay, and at the bottom 
I will simply add here if right first line timed out, zack, zack. I will call this right first line. This is maybe a little bit, uh, I don't know, maybe it was a little bit too, <laughs> too much to make this. Uh, and here in the setup, I will also already set, uh, wipe, wipe first line, dot, set timeout, three seconds. Then this hind scale should disappear. All right. This should disappear. Then I need to have some original tar float. After we are using the load cell here, and after we use the load cell, I will original tar, I will calculate the original tar, and there is a function load cell dot uh, get tar offset or something like this. Get tar offset. This gives the offset value in, it's a long value, it's the, the offset value of the ADC. Okay, so we have to divide, divide this by the calibration factor. Then we have the, the offset, the original tar offset in, then we have the original tar offset in, in grams. Right? This is actually how it's from ADC value. This is what the calibration factor is telling. Yeah? And this is when we have nothing on. When we turn on the scale, we have nothing on. Then we have our original tar value, now in grams. All right? And uh, if we're reading this tar now here, we will not write it like this. We write tar, and then we also write... Uh, is grams here pretty much the same as before and so we have here zero zero this is how it should look like this is how it should look like okay so we are here at 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 Two, one. All right, one. Print this out as one, but here we're writing one, two, three, four, five, one, two. All right, all right. And then I have a new here static float tar weight. This is at the beginning zero grams. Yeah? And I will ca calculate a new tar. I will call this tar. Yeah? Uh, this I no longer need. This here. Yeah? I will call this tar. Yeah? Uh, maybe here. This I also no longer need. And now I calculate this new tar value. Tar weight equals uh, exactly the same way as here, but minus the original tar. Then we only have the delta tar, which we had from the beginning. Okay. Uh, and then actually, I do it exactly the same way as here. I print out. Uh, this is not... Absolute load, I will call it tar, app star. And here, here we have not load, but this tar weight. Then we print out the tar weight. All right. And then we say, after a while, we need to wipe the wipe, the first line again. Set timeout, 3000. Let's see how this is working. Okay, clear, clear out was working. Yeah. And if we press the tar button, tar, it's gone. <laughs> Put something on. It's not printing out the tar weight. 
Why? Oh, here. Here I have to write zero, of course. I have to write it in the first line. Okay. Upload. Hind scale. Now, after three seconds, we should wipe it, this hind scale. All right. If I press the tar button, the tar, yes. You, and now, ah, now we have the tar value. And this is also wiped. And if I put now a load on, yeah, and I press the tar button, should tar and should be 65. No, 3 grams. What was this? 9 grams. Yeah. This is 9 grams. Cannot be 66 grams. Zero. All right. Zero. Put this on. 66. Press the tar button. Nine. Hmm. Hmm. What is this? I mean, it's working. Sixty-six. Zero. Zero is working. Oh, what is this? Why are you using int? This is stupid. Float. Float? Hello. It's an integer. I have to cast it to float. Ta. Yeah, now it looks good. Put something on. 66 grams. Ta button. 66 grams. All right. So now we know also how much load we have here at tar. At least we know it for three seconds and then we have to memorize. Good. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with the how this behaves, I must say. Really. Uh, I'm not sure if I had always, this is, you know, if you have overlapping recordings, uh, I'm not sure if, if I have this, this, uh, overlapping of the scale always turned off when I was programming. If not, I will edit it out and then the video will be shorter. Those videos are, when I just program, they are too long anyway. In my taste, but I don't know how to, you know, I want to show it, the whole process. But anyhow, you can download all those, those programs, this, this different stages of the programs. You can download it under that video always. Yeah? So the sketches that you can use it on your own. All right. Yeah. I will assemble this, put this together. And then I have a new kitchen scale. Cool, right? Yeah, I will, I will briefly show you in the next video to sum it up, the assembled version, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. For this done, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.